Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making TeacherCast your home for professional development. Today, we have a great show for you. It is a continuation of our Summer of STEM series. Uh, you'll, of course, remember that we just had a fantastic show with Dexter Industries talking about their brand new Go Pi Go, and we also did a fantastic show with Wonder Workshops about their Dot and Dash robots. Today, we're going to be talking to another amazing robotics company. This company has recently begun to create some amazing educational products. Starting off in 2014, they were a South Australian company that decided to have a Kickstarter campaign that was over 524% funding. This is an amazing application and an amazing tool we're going to talk today about. We have the Edison robot. You got to check these out. You got to pick these things up. Edison robots are absolutely fantastic. And to talk to them, to talk about them today, we have Kat Kennewell. Kat, how are you today? Welcome to the Teacher Cast podcast. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much for being here. Now, we had connected uh, a few weeks ago, and you had shown me some of the amazing things that you can do here with these Edison robots. We had a chance to check this thing out, and uh, we're going to be doing a whole series on the Edison robots with a complete review. There's so many things that we can do about this, but I want you to tell the audience what makes an Edison robot so special. So I think that what makes the Edison robot so special, first and foremost, is that the Edison robot, which is looks a little bit like a, a bit of an orange brick, is just the start of what an Edison can be. So it's fully Lego brick compatible on four of its sides. Uh, it comes with two built-on wheels, but you just pop them straight out, and then those wheels can be replaced with anything else. So you can use Edison as a robot to build into a huge amount of different projects, robotics-based projects. Uh, the robot is also the basis for programming. So we now have three different robotics programming languages that you can use with Edison. The earliest one, which is the one I'm most excited about because it's our newest edition, is called Edlocks, and that is for young students. And then we go right up into Edware, which is the original language we launched the Edison with back in 2014. And we also have EdPi, which is a text-based programming language for the Edison. So the Edison robot can really grow with students. Uh, it also has built-in sensors. So it has uh, sensors that let it detect the difference between light being reflected of dark and light surfaces. It can detect obstacles using infrared. It can send messages to other Edisons using infrared. It has built-in lights and built-in sound. So this little robot can really do a lot in terms of teaching true robotics. And it also can teach a lot about coding and work with students as they go from basically uh, grade three all the way into high school. You know, I've been playing with these with my three-year-olds at home. And as you said, they are completely indestructible. In fact, on our blog post on TeacherCast, we have a video that shows somebody backing a car over this. And then it just yeah. happens to move and it rolls around. I love the, the again, it is a Lego type product where you can actually continue to build with everything here and it's got a ton of sensors we have a great guest on today i want to bring on phil from pennsylvania a teacher that's going to be talking to us a little bit about what is he doing with his students using the edison robot phil welcome to the program how are you today I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show today. Now, you uh, are going to be using Edison Robots this year with your students, and you've come up with some pretty interesting things. First of all, tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you to the Edison Robot. Uh, okay, so what brought me to the Edison Robot? Um, I came across it at a conference uh, about six, seven months ago, and I was sold within five minutes. Um, you know, it's cost-effective. It has a very, very powerful computer in it. Um, and some of the things that you can do with Edison, it takes programming with the children to the next level. It takes programming into transforming it into reality. There's a lot of coding websites out there that teach programming to students through gaming. But this is one of the first things that I've seen where a student can very easily design a program on their platform. Edison's platform, Edware, that's one of the software platforms you can design on. It's so easy to use, but after they design a program on that platform, they can turn it into reality by downloading it to the robot and watching it perform a task. And it's that developing that logical thought process at an early age uh, with students, it's really important because 
they can apply the logical thought process and coding to other applications in their life. Now, so now, Phil, you 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 teach middle school, and you yes. know, obviously, we're recording this over the summertime, so you're going to have kids coming in in a few weeks, getting yeah. all ready for this. There's a lot of teachers that are out there listening to these robotics shows, these STEM shows going, okay, I have to do this, or I'm a new STEM teacher. I don't know how to do this. What advice do you have for teachers out there that are maybe going into robotics for the first time, maybe with an Edison, maybe with a different um, uh, platform in front of them, but how do you calm their minds when it comes to just how do you start this, right? We've all seen amazing programs, Mm -hmm. but talk to us about that first few days. Well, I can tell you this, uh, what Edison has on their website for free resources is great. Uh, they have these, uh, ed books and these ed books are free and, 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 and I understand from a teacher's perspective, this can be a little overwhelming. Okay. But these ed books that are already designed and they're free, they're on the Edison website. They take you step by step through. 10 different programming tutorials and you know as a teacher before i give them to the students well i'm going to do them myself so i went through and i did these myself and that's how i learned how to program the edison robot so students or parents teachers uh should not be afraid to play with this robot it's very user friendly and the resources are free on the web for you so what I'm understanding here, Phil, is that there's a lot of free resources. Am I, am I understanding that here? Yes. You get your bang for your buck with Edison. When you pay for this product, the things that are tagged on on their website for free – you know, make it a very valuable purchase. So, so Kat, let's talk a little bit about this. I, I, I need to bring up the price point here because as we're going to be yeah. talking about this, we are looking at choices, right? A school district is interested Absolutely. in going into STEM or has STEM education. They want to put together a menu for their kids. Am I correct in thinking that 10 Edison robots is roughly the same price as one Lego kit? Yeah, you know, it's roughly the same as one Lego Mindstorm. Yes, I think last I looked it up, Lego Mindstorm was about three hundred and sixty dollars USD, and ten Edison robots are sorry, three thirty is a Lego Mindstorm, I think, and three sixty is what will get you ten pack of Edison robots. And as Phil was saying uh, and making me feel very very happy, that that's it. Other than your batteries, uh, the programming languages are free. All of the resources are free, so that's lesson plans, teacher's guides, the worksheets, the ed books, all of that is free to be downloaded. Uh, We have activity maps that are free to be downloaded. As many students as you want and any of the programming platforms, that's all free. The only thing that has to be bought is the actual Edisons. And then you do need the batteries to go with those Edisons. And that's it. So look, I've had the lucky chance to play around a bit with a Lego Mindstorm and they're incredible. There's a lot of really amazing robotics products out there, but not necessarily ones that you can stock your classroom with. And that's really where at Microbreak, the the company that makes Edison, that's really our mission is to make coding and robotics accessible to everyone. And so do we need to be able to do it at a price point where schools can actually put robots in kids' hands, not one robot in a school. So we know we have these great Edison robots. They're nice. They're compact. They're easily used in the classroom. We know that the price is pretty good on them. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the software. We have a great video that's going to showcase a software called EdBlocks, and you can find information about that over at edbloxapp.com. But Kat, talk to us a little bit about what EdBlocks is. Yeah. So EdBlocks is the newest programming language that we've released for the Edison robot. Edware, which is a very powerful language, but still simple to use, has a drag and drop based premise, but it does require some text based input still uh, to control variables and different elements of programming, which is is still laid out in a way that's quite easy to learn once you know a little bit about it. But if you've never used coding, it can be a bit intimidating. And it's also a little bit difficult, we found, for students that are maybe eight, nine years old. You really need kids that are getting closer to that 12, 13, 14 mark to to really understand what's going on with Edware. So what we decided to do was to, to fill in that gap, that younger gap, 
with this new language called Edloth. It's based off of MIT's Scratch, which is, of course, based off of Google's Blockly. It's a horizontal block-based coding language, drag and drop. So all the students have to do in this language is choose from one of five menus, find the icon-based block that they want, drag it down into the programming area, and connect it to the starting block, and that's it. That's all they have to do to create their programs. And then programming them down into Edison is as simple as pushing one button on the robot and clicking one button inside the programming app, connecting the Edison to the computer, of course, and, and that's it. So it's a really simple way for anyone to learn how to code. It is designed for younger students, so basically students between uh, about year three and year six. Though I, I will say I have shown this to several adults during our alpha and beta testing that are not um, programmers, people that, that don't know anything about coding, and, and they just get absolutely hooked. And next thing you know, they're creating little safety Edison driving safely across the street programs. It's quite funny to watch and it's quite enjoyable. Let's get started with Edblocks. Using Edblocks is easy. Just drag and drop the blocks you want to build a program. Simply click on a number to change a block's duration. You can find more blocks by clicking on the arrow buttons. Once you've built your program, you can download it to your Edison robot. Connect your Edison to your computer using the EDCOM cable. Press the round record button on Edison one time. Then click the program button in EdBlocks. Make sure your volume is turned all the way up. Then click program Edison. Edison will follow your program one block at a time. EdBlocks makes it easy to experiment with programming. With over 150 blocks, there's so much you can do. What will you create with Edison and EdBlocks? In 2014, when the Edison robot came out, they had a fantastic motto, which was to make robotics accessible to all students. I hope from that video on EdBlocks, you can see that this is now available for all students creating real world applications for real world situations. Phil, talk to us a little bit about some of the things that you're doing in your school district with, with Edison Robots. I understand that you have a fantastic website that you've created for this year. Yes, um, I created a website with some design challenges uh, to give my students. And uh, the design challenges I came up with were real world applications that they could um, apply to their lives because they've seen it every single day. For example, uh, when you walk into a room and a light comes on automatically, kids have seen that happen today. Uh, or you put your hands under a paper towel dispenser, kids have seen that happen today. Um, and when the paper towels just dispense out. Uh, another one that kids see all the time, uh, automatic uh, toilets that flush. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, sensor applications that, you know, I've designed challenges and I put them on my website for the kids to try at home. Uh, the kids in my class, they use Chromebooks. And the thing that's great is they take a Chromebook home with them at nighttime and they can keep programming on uh, Edison's platform at home because they have a web-based platform the kids can program on. Uh, so therefore, they can look at my design challenge at home and try and program at home. They can try and program it in class. Uh, and they're real world applications, things that the kids can relate to. And I tell the students at this age, you should look at the world around you and start to question, how does that work? You know, it's not magic inside the paper towel dispenser that, you know, when they put their hand underneath, it dispenses a certain amount of paper towels. There's a computer program there. Well, now the kids can design the computer program, and Edison allows them to do that task. You know, I love the real-world stuff. I love the authentic learning. It brings it into project-based learning. It brings it into STEM education. It brings it into absolutely everything. Kat, I got to tell you, I've been playing with this for a while, and of course, anybody that watches Teacher Cast knows our, our co-host, Dr. Sam Patterson, is out there trying these things. I saw him doing some pretty interesting things, uh, hacking some toys with this, um, trying to make this thing roll out some pretty interesting contraptions over in his neck of the woods. 
I wanted to ask you about one thing before we, we wrap up the show today. In the video that we have on our blog post, it shows that you can actually, by using some of the Lego products, hitch yep. multiple Edison robots together to create more... I don't know if horsepower is the right word for here, but you can actually, you know, put multiple, multiple, multiple Edisons together to build really anything that you're looking for. Yes, absolutely. And uh, we we have one of the software engineers at, at the company does robot fighting as his spare time hobby. And we've been teasing him about trying to get into the category where he can just basically build multiple o ro uh, Edisons together and then I've suggested dipping them in some sort of metal and just making that be the robot. But apparently the sizes aren't quite right. But yeah, you you absolutely can with without using molten metal. You can connect multiple Edisons together. You can do all sorts of projects with that. On our website, we actually have instructions as to how to do that uh, and how you can use two Edisons, for example, combining them together and build a, a device that holds a pen and you can then program the top Edison to move in such a way that it will drag the pen along and do a bit of printing style printing like that. And and there's lots of different projects that we didn't come up with that are now all over our, our social communities. We've got, I think just this past Easter, somebody had made this incredible chocolate egg mold wow. powered by Edison's. Yeah, it's just incredible stuff. And and people have some really fantastic ideas and they're sharing them out all the time. And, and you know, someone like Phil takes it and, and creates all these amazing real world challenges and it, 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 at my company we just find that so inspiring because we made this little orange robot and we sent it out into the world and we're so so thrilled by how many people are using it for how many different things and, and as Phil was saying about students finding it a lot more meaningful than just an online coding game we found through our own research that especially girls especially young girls get a to a limit with coding quite quickly if they can't see real world manifestations with it. And Edison, just the very fact that they can put their program into Edison and then see what Edison does, that creates that real world feedback that's so important, especially to the younger girls, to give them the feedback, to inspire them to keep going and you know, working to ever getting that gender gap in STEM education closer and closer. So clearly there's a lot of things that we can do here with this, and we're going to be expanding our, our knowledge of the Edison robot as we go through. So look for additional posts on TeacherCast throughout the summer. Um, like I said, Sam's got some pretty cool things that he's doing with this, and I can't wait to uh, have you check out all the stuff he's doing over on Instagram and his hacking toys stuff. Phil, thank you so much for coming on and sharing well, everything you. that you're doing. Where do we get a hold of you? Um, you can actually uh, send me an email. Uh, my email is based on my name. I'm sure it's up on the screen there. Uh, first initial, last name. And uh, you can check out my website as well. Uh, that's the best way to get a hold of me. And Kat, where do we go to learn more about the Edison Robot and all the great stuff that you guys are doing there over at uh, Microbrick? Best place to start is at meetedison.com. So that's our Edison website. Uh, we're all over social platforms. Uh, usually the handle at Meet Edison is the way to go. So Twitter is at Meet Edison. Uh, Facebook is Meet Edison. Um, I think that Instagram and Pinterest are both variations of that as well. But if you check out our website, meetedison.com, you'll find links to all of our social and we'll also put them all in the blog post. And that wraps up another episode of the TeacherCast podcast. I want to thank our friends over with Edison Robots. Please check them out over at hashtag Meet Edison. Check out all their great things. Their applications, their robots are certainly fantastic. And again, we're going to be doing a complete write-up on them sometime this summer over on TeacherCast. There's, of course, several great ways that you can be a part of the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network. We, of course, love it when you find us on Twitter at TeacherCast. Leave us a voicemail over at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. Email us at feedback at TeacherCast.net. And of course, you can subscribe to this and all of our shows over on TeacherCast.net slash iTunes and TeacherCast.net slash YouTube. On behalf of everybody here on the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students.